Thank you so much. Oh, See! 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 All right, more that to come. Pretty good. Have a seat. Thank you. Wow. I okay. thought this was an international crowd. It sounds like a bunch of 12s. Uh, <laughs> it does sound like a bunch. Of, we've converted them all just Very for good. today. Very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, so I grew up in West Texas, which is Friday Night Lights territory. Yeah, that's high school and football is the best. Yeah, uh, and it, it's pretty much life. But we were, uh, you know, we were not Cowboys fans, as most people would suspect. We were Oilers fans. Well, uh, do, do we have any connection to Warren Moon? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we used to run around with mustaches and helmets all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he connects you a little bit with here. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I always wonder, like, what do you think somebody like Warren Moon would be able to do in today's environment? Oh, he'd be phenomenal. He yeah. was one of the great, great athletes, one of the great throwers, you know, just a pure passer um, and a great competitor. He lasted a long time. Durability was a, was a you know, real strength of his. Uh, fantastic leader. He is everything. He would be a great player today. That's no awesome. question. Uh, well, um, obviously, you know, in, in football and in life, you know, there's such an, there's so much around competition and uh, how do you sort of come out on top and, and how do you think about competition? And actually, if you came here, uh, you probably came here by way of SeaTac or the light rail or I-5 or whatever it was, and there's, you couldn't have missed this giant face. Uh, over there on the stadium that says always compete with Pete Carroll underneath, <laughs> right? I have not seen that yet. You haven't seen not that? Seen, no, you mentioned it. I didn't know that. We all saw it. Yeah. Out town. So tell it's me about well. that. What is this? What, is, what, is, what do you mean by always compete? Or is, is that a mantra? Or no, that's really, that? been the, that's really been kind of the go-to line about our philosophy and our approach, you know, that uh, you're either competing or you're not. You know, we find ourselves, we've got some phrasing and stuff that some of you may have heard, you know, we're in a relentless pursuit of finding a competitive edge in everything we're doing. It's, it's uh, the central theme in our program is competition, and that is because I, if I was going to tell you what I am, I was going to tell you I'm a competitor, you know, and so that when in designing the approach and the philosophy, um, I wanted to stay as close to my heart as, as we could so I could stay true to it and always, you know, ring a bell for, for battling and competing. But we may think of competing a little different than you, though. Okay. Uh, I know that, uh, you know, you, there's just kind of standard thoughts of what competition is. And for us, it's about striving for excellence. It's not about the winning and the losing part of it. It's not about beating somebody up to, to show that you can stand above them. It, it's really, uh, it's a mentality about striving for what you want to become. And so... Uh, uh, that's, that permeates throughout our program and it, it kind of runs strong throughout all of the themes and what we're, what we're guided by. We were talking a little bit backstage with Lucas and Lee mm -hmm. uh, about you know, what it looks like to kind of push those limits of, of striving to succeed and striving to have excellence in you know, performance. How do you think about pushing the limits and going right up to the line? And, <laughs> well, yeah, what's the, what's well, that look I, like I think for you? about that a lot. You know, I, yeah. I can imagine that for Lucas and Lee to have done what they've done and to continue to stay so vibrant about it and, and uh, excited about their future and looking for the next chance to do something right. And you can just tell, you know, that these are gritty guys now. These, these guys got the right stuff to, <laughs> to be leaders for you guys. Um, they're amazing, but I, I, I do, I do, <laughs> yeah, I, I do think that uh, there's a whole mentality here that, we're, that we, we can talk about, you know, that really is um, a part of our lives and every, everything we're doing. You know, we're competing, if, if you're striving to be the best, well, that means that you're always tuned in, and if you're striving to be your best, you can be your best father or your best brother or your best husband or the, the best wife that you can be and, and as well as the best manager and you know, worker in, in your workplace, I think it has to do with everything. You know, it's, it's the mentality about pushing to see how far you can go and how far you can take stuff. In that, you know, I've, I've been in trouble a little bit for going too far, you know. Uh, <laughs> um, there's, no. I, think, I, I think that there's been, I've heard that there's like seven times teams have been fined in the NFL for practicing too hard, and we've been fined three of those seven. Yeah, so, we're I like out it. There. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, some sides, like, you know, okay, well, we practice too hard. Well, okay, I like that, but we, we, it's because we're always trying to find what is the limit, how far could we take it so that we could gather the most out of it and help our guys as much as possible. Well, we crossed the line a couple times, and, you know, and so we were connected uh, to what the fine system's all about. So, 
Yeah, you know, I mean, I mean, there's been some you know tech company mantras that are sort of like move fast and break shit. Yeah. Uh, this idea of like let's let's just go and press to the limits because we believe in innovation and we want to push those boundaries and we want to move forward. I think there's a question of integrity there. You know, I mean, if you knowingly are going too far and you knowingly you're busting rules that you, you know that you have that awareness, that's one thing. If you're trying to really develop what the limits are because they kind of are, they are gray right there, and, yeah. and we don't yeah. know, uh, you know, then then you're kind of pushing and you are pioneering a little bit and, and that, and that's that part. A Great distinction. Yeah, yeah, that part of it, I, you know, I, I can relate to <laughs> clearly, and so it does. It, you have to know when it is enough, and, and so I've been told by the commissioner <laughs> a few times, "What's enough?" <laughs> <laughs> so, what what about when competition is not really fair? Um, you know, maybe I don't, we don't have to talk about deflated footballs or stealing signals or anything like that. If you don't want, I mean, we can talk about that, but I don't think we should. <laughs> um, but I do want to talk about the importance of, yeah, working with the commissioner, the league, other teams, you know, to make sure that there is a, an equal playing field and, and how you guys think about that. Well, I, from the football stand, standpoint, I think it's pretty clear. You, you, you know, you can see how this works. There's rules and guidelines and there's a, you know, a governing body and there's a commissioner. But they and all that change kind of stuff. and they move as well, yeah. Well, and, and so the, but the parameters are pretty, pretty well defined in, in, in that. Uh, and so um, people can find their way around the rules. That, that can happen. I think in business, I, I would think that it's a much more open terrain and, and uh, where you don't have the same strict kind of, I mean, think how tightly we're governed and, you know, and, and how uh, aggressively they, they try to maintain uh, norms. I would think in business that you're, you're challenged by the opportunities to stretch even more so than ever. Uh, and, and so... Um, but what I truly think about that is, is that I don't care about the competition. I don't care about the other side, of the, the, other, the other aspect of what we're up against. Uh, with a real clear thought that we want to focus on that which we can control. And I can't control what they're doing. I can't control where, how they think about stuff or how they operate. And, so, and, and plus, if I do, I'm spending valuable focused time on something that I really have no factor in, in, in weighing into. And uh, I'm not a big one to chase down the, the, the rules and all that kind of stuff. And, and I don't have, have time for that because we're trying to develop the way we perform and what we do, what we can control uh, to the max. And in that, we don't even, we don't want to sanction the other side being worthy of our focus and attention. So we don't spend a lot of time on our opponent. Yep. And, and we don't spend a lot of time on the other players on the other teams uh, any more than we have to to introduce and you know, be aware of it. And I, I, that's a mentality. But more than that, it's a discipline. It's a discipline of holding your focus to that which is right there that you can really do something about it and make that thing great. And then, okay, wherever that leaves you at the end of the day, um, I found out that if we perform like we're capable, we beat almost everybody. Yep. It's when we don't, when we underperform or we try too hard, we go too far to try and match something up is when we get outside focus of our own ability. too much on matching, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and then we don't perform like we're capable. And that's, that's a great challenge in itself. And I don't think it's just football, I think it's in everything. But we, we see it actually a lot in our industry, don't we guys? <laughs> um, in terms of like sort of matching feature to feature and, and sort of trying to just follow competition as it grows. And in fact, even at Tune, we have a Slack channel that's like about competition, so everyone's talking about competition. And we have a Slack channel that now though that's talking about customers. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and, and we wanna see the Slack channel about customers be so much more than the one about competition. Like let's focus on our vision and yeah. what we need to provide. And how well, I'll give you an illustration. We worked with a group, a local group, a big time corporation, that, and the, the CEO had a picture of his number one you know, adversary in the marketplace on his desk. Oof. The guy was sitting right there at his Oof. desk, and, and he looked at him every <laughs> day. Yeah, and, and to me, all of the time he spent, you know, growling and you know, and <laughs> cussing him out or whatever he did. That that was a great illustration of allowing somebody else's world to enter into yours. To dominate when, yours yeah, yeah, you know, and where I think it's the other way. It really goes back to uh, Coach John Wooden, the UCLA basketball coach. You know, he was mm -hmm. the guy that really made that come clear that you don't need to focus on their performance at all. You need to get your performance as well as you can or orchestrate it. And so that's. Uh, it's been a it's been a strong mindset. Yeah, for you're us. talking about Coach Wooden's sort of uh, you know parts of the pyramid of success. Um, you actually have your own pyramid, the the Win Forever pyramid. Yeah, that, that, uh, tell us about that. <laughs> yeah, well that that was um, that came from uh, a time when I was trying to figure out what was next. You know, um, I really can't see. Him. Let me ask you guys. I don't, uh, if you could, you'll know the numbers, and I'll guess the numbers. How many people out there? Well, first off, y'all want to be really good at what you're doing. I know that. Well, let's accept that. And you're all great at what you're doing, I'm sure. But how many of you out there have a philosophy? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you have a philosophy that you know of, raise your hand. 
Okay, look, just look around so you can see the numbers. Okay, those people that just raised their hand, how many of you right now could stand up with, with Peter and I up here and tell us in 25 words or less what your philosophy is? Uh, if you notice that those hands aren't raised, <laughs> a lot of those hands came down. Okay, so here... Okay, it took me 45 minutes earlier, but... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. Here's the deal. <laughs> You're sending me off on a tangent here. Here's the deal. If you want to be really good at something and you want to perform at a high level and you want to affect those people around you to also perform at a really high level, and, and, and you know, that's, that's what you're built on, then, then wouldn't it help if they understood, those that work around you understood what it is you feel that is important? What do you feel, what are the things you believe in? What are the things that make up your philosophy, which is really the collection of things you believe in? Mm -hmm. and, wouldn't, wouldn't it help if when they represent you or they speak for you when you're not in the room or they act upon making decisions that they knew exactly where you were what coming from? Yeah. Okay, so, of course, yeah. Well, if you don't know what it is, can I coach him for a second there? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> if you, you don't know, if you, you, if you I will, I will. Get up, do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm okay well, here's the deal. If you don't know exactly what you feel about your beliefs and your approach to the point where you can help somebody next to you come to understand what that's all about so they can have a chance of acting in accordance with you and so they could compliment you by understanding. If, if you aren't able to do that in a clear, succinct fashion, you gotta get going. <laughs> we gotta get coached up a little bit here because this is just a process. Here's the deal, you all have beliefs. You already know what kind of car you drive, the clothes you wear, the music you listen to, the kinds of people you hang out with, the food you eat, you've already made decisions about things that you believe in. But you might not have ever realized that if you took the time and stepped back and, and, and really sat down with just you and, and tried to really orchestrate and recognize what it is you firmly believe in, not just for you, but that's a great moment individually. It's a great moment for any individual to go, wow, I never realized this is really who I am and what, what makes me tick. That's one thing. But when you can share that with the people around you, they will function on a much different level. They'll, sense, they'll, be, they'll, be, they'll look at you come walking down the hall and say, wait, what, you've been working out or something? They'll think, you've been eating right? Or they'll, they'll see it and feel it in you. And so <laughs> that is so powerful, but also for you to have a chance to be as successful as you can be, you gotta know. So I'll go sit down here with that anyway. That's, okay, that's <laughs> okay. But, so the, the, the point is that there, there was a time when I had to, you know, I've been fired enough times now. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Come and, to the territory. Yeah, yeah we've yeah, <laughs> been fired enough times that uh, the last time I was fired was the most significant time in that I... I just had to figure it out and, and I had to come together with my own thoughts and I kind of stumbled into it going back to Coach Wooden. He had inspired me in the sense he was such an unusual enigmatic leader. He was the best champion winner ever in college basketball. He was unbelievable and uh, he just retired at the end of a great string and just stepped out, you know, and, and but it, what hit me is that he had his philosophy. He knew what he thought and he it wasn't like anybody else's and I, I just stumbled into trying to figure that out. So I implore you to, if you want to be great, if you want to do something really at the top of your game, you got to figure out who you are, what, what you stand about. for, what's important, and not even that, <clears throat> so you can convey it to the people that are around you that need to know that. And you know, yeah, I don't I, think, I think that's, that's just so about football much, now. Yeah, no, I think I that's, think it's football. no, of course yeah. not. It's so much about just communication in general. We think, you know, you know you know things like love languages or like what is it about me that I, I need or what is it that I'm going after and if people around us know what those things are they can communicate with us they yes. can work with yeah, us and they can depths align that you with get to us, right? sure, certainly. Uh, I also think um, it's, it's pretty incredible if you just come to the table with a vision how many people will join <laughs> no, uh, no, that's leadership. And, and part yeah. of that is that, you know, a lot of people maybe haven't established one, and yeah. so they can, they can come together on this one. I, I think that is a real illustration of leadership, and that, and that people with, you know, they, they can sense, hey, this guy has a clue where he's going, so they may ask you questions. <laughs> they may want to yeah. watch you a little bit differently, and, and that is, I think, part of the definition of what leadership is. Let's talk a little bit about um, Compete to Create. Good. So uh, this is an organization that you co-founded, which provides mindset training for high performers. Explain a little bit about what that is. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thanks for bringing it up. Uh, for years, people have been coming to us and asking us, you know, because we do things a little bit differently, and there's a different kind of vibe about our, our organization, and 
the way we operate, and they wonder, well, how could it be that you look like you're having a good time? <laughs> you know, I can't figure that out. Because <laughs> most coaches... There are a lot of most, smiles in that video. Most, yeah, most a, programs are kind of tormented with the pressure of, of you know, the, the performance and succeeding and all that kind of stuff. And we are too, but we, we have come about it a little bit different way. And so people have been coming for years, coaches, people in the business world. And so we decided to... Let, Let's share it, you know, let, let's share it somewhat. And, and uh, I've always been wide open to do that and, and welcome it because I learn more as I interact. Um, but uh, so we, we developed a, a group uh, with the powerhouse, again, Dr. Michael Gervais is really the guy that delivers the message to us, is really the leader. Uh, uh, our CEO, Michael Gale, is an incredible uh, indiv individual also in, in the digital world and in, in, in high tech and everything that's going on. He's been extremely successful. We've put together a presentation that we can, you know, we can deliver, and uh, we've done it to individuals. We've done it to co some companies. We're, we're, we've been so overwhelmed by Microsoft because they're so big uh, that we've been with them a few years Consumed, now. Yeah. yeah, we've been there. Well, there's 90,000 of them, you know, yeah. so so uh, an army of people to train. We've trained thousands of people uh, in, in really what mindset is all about and, and uh, developing an attitude about how you can um, elevate yourself to be the performer that you're capable of being, and and uh, it's it's really fun and it's fascinating and uh, it's about getting better. Here's where it comes from. It comes from this simple thought that we're, in our organization, we're trying to help people be the best they can be. Every individual, every step of the way, every aspect of it from the, you know, from the bottom floor to the top. And, and that's not just a statement. That's a avocation. You, you, you are, it, we're committed. So we're competing because that's a central mm -hmm. theme. We're competing to try, help people figure out how they can be the best they can be. With this thought, we, we buy into the extraordinary, unique qualities that people have. We, we, we believe, and you've maybe heard us say this before, and we talk about celebrating the uniqueness, you know, and, and uh, there may be somebody in the crowd here that's a fairly well, unique individual. Well, and this individual. is something that I, I think most of us see I, that you do I can incredibly feel well. You let these personalities <laughs> shine, right? Well, this is that, that that's, to understand how it works, you can never just let guys be like they want to be across yeah. the board. You can't do it because yeah. that, that's not going to get it. There's a team mentality. There's, there's a, uh, an unselfishness. There's an ethic about being part of a team. If you can't do that, then you can't be part of us. But in that, for our guys to perform at their best, I think we have to find ways to bring out the true essence in the, in the extraordinary aspects they have. And... Um, and there's some elements of the makeup we love. It's the, the real gritty, competitive guy with the chip on his shoulder. Yep. But it's, it's also the, uh, what is so special about them. Now, with that thought, if you're really working to care about the people, to find out, one, who they are, that's relationship-oriented. We're a relationship driven group and we've got to work with our learners and figure out what they're all about, where they're coming from so that we can best serve them so they could best find their philosophy and their approach and what they stand for so that they can operate at their best. And when we do that, we think it orchestrates a culture and an environment that, uh, that is thriving and uh, it's just positive and, it's, and hopefully I'm just taxed with, can I find this next guy? Yeah, can we yeah. figure out who he is and then, and then bring him up? You know? and so um, that's, a, that's what we share in C2C. We, we share that whole approach and that mentality and, and uh, it's really you know, valuing the human aspect of your business, not just the products and not just the other guys. And it's, yep. it's really drawing from the people that we have. And we find that that, that allows us to, to move parts around a lot and, 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 and fit people in to where they can, they can excel better. We don't always understand that early on. It takes us some time, but it's relationship driven. And, and in that, we help to develop a mindset where they can be at their best. I mean, it's, it's just a really fun way to go about it. So with all, all of these different strengths or even weaknesses, like what is, what is the sort of the magical substance or the glue part of the teamwork, right? Uh, what, what is the thing that's like, this, this is what signifies or unifies an actual it's, team? It's building around the great competitors, really. It's, it's around the people who really, the leaders. The leaders that, that have the hmm. mentality, that have that, that thing we were talking about, that the other guys look at them and they see they, 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 they're the who-sayers. They're the ones, you gotta listen to what they're saying, you gotta watch what they're doing, and, and help cultivate a, a, a core of people that, that you can build around. We told our guys and our team, uh, I don't know, five years ago, six years ago now, that we see you guys as the core of the team. And we've worked really hard to maintain continuity so that we can keep those guys in flow so they, they can continue to be the heartbeat and the mentality of what it's all about and, and hopes that, it, you know, that they'll affect the others in a, in a really positive way. And what about when, these, when conflicts arise or, or like blame or like you should have caught that or whatever? Like how do you guys deal with that? Individually. Yeah. 
Really, it depends. Yeah, individually, it depends on it depends on the guy. And if you really There's know, it's not like a you know for for every single play that happens. Take a lap. Like this, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> take a lap. Uh, yeah, yeah. You Burpees. Drop, my drop the ball, take a lap. Yeah, do, do <laughs> twenty push-ups. Yeah. Um, no, and, and um, I get asked about this a lot because how do you manage when you're gonna when you're gonna manage people as individuals, and how could you do that? And guys get treated accordingly for what they need. And yep. we, as best as we can understand that. And we don't, we're not always right about that. We make mistakes. But uh, there's certain ways. Some guys can take it when, you, when you, you, you kick them in the ass. And sometimes they can't. And sometimes they can't, they, they can't respond the way that they, they best respond. And what's important to us yep. is we tell them, we respond to them in the way that helps them do the very next step they take better. So we have to be disciplined about our language. We have to be disciplined about That's our I'm responsibility. About we as coaches yeah, and leaders, no, we yeah. have to be really good at it. Because when we step out of line, we screw it up. You see things happen that, that didn't need to happen. So it's our discipline that it takes. You know, yeah. and, we, we've seen. I mean, this has been a huge transformation in our company. You know, going from a startup to being 400 people. Um, you know, we we oftentimes look at the performer and say, well, they they just weren't able to deliver, or there's something wrong, or something yeah. broken. But man, what a responsibility we have as managers! What a yeah. responsibility! I, we have I to like support that. I, I don't. Connect. I don't. Yeah. That's not the way that we click. You know, we don't click. That that's not the click. That's the, their problem or their fault or who we point the finger at. Mm -hmm. That's not the way we go. We go right to me first. I'm the first one to say I screwed it up. I wish I would have seen that better. I wish I would have done that right. right. Here we go. And then and then right on right on down the line. That. that <laughs> 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 I don't, I don't. But uh, no. but that that to me is the best way I can demonstrate to them accountability. And um, but I always feel like I could have possibly factored in to help somebody do a little bit better too. You know, and and I want our coaches to think that. I want our players to operate like that. I want everybody in the organization to feel that way and be humbled that way and and, and humbled in a manner that they're always going to look inside first before they lash out or whatever. And it's hard to do that now. It's hard, and it's challenging, especially with all the media and the following, and the, you guys have bottom lines, and you've got quotas and you know, whatever you, know, you call those things, incentives and all that stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All that business That's stuff, exactly what they're all called. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect. And you better make it. <laughs> no, thank you so much for sharing some of that philosophy. Uh, it, it's certainly something that inspires people, you know, outside of football, uh, certainly in Seattle and the worldwide. And, uh, and I'm really excited that you're pursuing teaching others and mentoring and helping others grow in this way. Um, it's, it's so needed. Uh, we need more of this, and, and especially in the tech community. I think you guys can all agree. We're seeing some interesting, uh, interesting uh, illustrations of leadership in the country right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so that was going to be part of my lightning round. <laughs> so, yeah, so I was going to. I was going to ask so about. I, I support you. We do need something. <laughs> yeah, something. I was going to ask about social media and how you think about players <laughs> using social media and how how we control all this. And I was like, maybe they don't have like the the best mentorship uh, from you know the presidency on how to use social media oh. at this point. But um, our guys uh, are way better yeah. than he is. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> That's the quote of the day. It's, 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 well, there was a time, you know, yeah. if you go back, I don't know, five or six years, it seems like maybe it was seven or eight years, that it was just such a wide open terrain. I mean, anybody could say, people thought that tweeting was texting, you know, <laughs> and they found out the hard way that that's not what's going on, you know. And, I do remember a few yeah. players having yeah. that problem. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, players, the, the players are very, and, yeah. and, you know, young people are very savvy right now. It's the old people you got to look out for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going we're gonna to bust into a lightning round on a few things. But the first one I want to talk about is this sort of, uh, you know, Seattle Bay Area thing. Um, so uh, we got Seahawks and 49ers, we got Stanford, we got UW, we got Google and Microsoft. There is a little bit of a rivalry that's going on between the Pacific Northwest and the Valley in general. Um, you know, having spent time coaching and recruiting up and down this sure. whole coast, uh, what do you make of that? Or, is there a rivalry or, uh, yeah, if so, there's who wins? There's certainly a commonality. <laughs> there's certainly a, a, a mentality of uh, innovation, you know, and, and pressing the, the, the boundaries and, and uh, appreciation for the creative, and, and there's, that's, that's the facts, you know, and, and it, it's here, it's really present, and it seems very comfortable for me, you know, I grew up in, in born in San Francisco, so I'm right in the Bay Area and all that, and, and to see the Valley go crazy, we were at the Niners right in the middle of, the, I was coaching there right when the thing was going berserk, and uh, there was just a, a, a feeling in, in, in the, you could sense it, you could taste it, it's here too, and, uh, and the music may be a little better up here than it is down there, uh, <laughs> but, uh, 
Well, but sure, I think, I mean, you know, I would certainly think that business-wise, as you can feel, I mean, Seattle and San Francisco, there are towns near the water, there's something about it, there's, you know, there's uh, great thriving communities around it. And that, we, have a, it we have a lot of people that maybe are visiting Seattle for the first time. First time, anybody? Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you, uh, what, what's your favorite sort of Seattle memory? Something that has to do with the town? Uh, some moment or, or, or some experience you had here I in Seattle. I got two of them, and neither one of them had to do with the town. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, favorite memory in general. Yeah, right. one, one of them was uh, uh, Jermaine Curse catching the, the pass at the end of the, the overtime against the Packers. And, 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 uh, and the other one was, was Richard Sherman's tap that, that uh, you know, <laughs> okay. the, the tap ball the 49 <laughs> we'll Both go with those, those are Super yeah. Bowl oriented moments right there. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, yeah. Look, those moments for everyone, there's such, such extraordinary just stoppages in time, you know, yeah. and uh, those are incredible. There's one other one, too. I'll give you another one. Yep. The, 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 now I think about it, there's, there's the, uh, and just because our guy's in the house, I hear uh, Beast Mode hit, happened one time <laughs> in, a, in a fantastic <laughs> way uh, against the, in the playoffs again the playoffs, uh, against yep. the Saints. That was a, an incredible moment, too. Yeah. yeah. Woo! He's hiding in here somewhere. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, lighting round here. Okay, what's the first thing you look on your look at on your phone in the morning? I look, uh, yeah, I look right to the news of the day. Uh, I got a little news app that, that I hit just to see what the heck he said last night. <laughs> 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 but my next one, my next one is I go to if I miss. It depends on what I missed the night before. If it, Rachel is my first. I go to her first because oh, she's okay. uh, best information. But then I'm going right to Stephen Colbert. That's awesome. If I missed him, that's where I go. So. Uh, what's one technology that you wish would be developed sooner or better? Something that we're missing that there needs to be. Well, um, I, that's more kind of what I regret, but then I, I anticipate and I look forward to it is that someday that sports will be played by, by uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there'll be a way for, for a Full player. game of strategy. There, there'll be a way to connect um, in a holographic whatever uh, where players could play the game, but they're not going to be the ones that get hurt. Yeah. Wow. So. That's incredible. Then they could play, play forever. They would never you know, get too old and all that stuff. Outside of Seattle, what's your favorite stadium to play in? Okay, I'm going to go uh, political on you right here. Uh, it's... It's definitely going up to Curly Lambeau because it's our opener. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's a great place to play. It happens to be our opening game. So yeah. uh, we've got to ask who uh, will the Seahawks beat in the Super Bowl this year? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't see, see, the, uh, I don't care about the competition. Oh, okay, that, right? okay, yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're just gonna win the Super Bowl. That'll be fine. <laughs> um, okay, a couple of personal things. Um, if you were not a coach, what would you be? <laughs> well, you know, you took those tests when you're getting, out, getting ready to find a job oh, out of college. Yeah. yeah, I was supposed to be a recreation director. That's and, close. It's uh, <laughs> pretty close. I can't see me rolling out the balls at the rec center and stuff like that. <laughs> but what I would have liked to have been is I would have liked to have been an archaeologist. Really? Yeah. I would like to figure out what... Yeah, what's the interest everything. there? Why, why I want to know where there? everything came from. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well, keep digging, you know, it's keep digging. Indiana Jones, yeah. yeah, yeah. Indiana <laughs> Jones is kind of in the model, that's right. <laughs> I love it. Um, obviously, we hope that you're a coach forever uh, for, for Seattle, but someday you might hang up those custom white dad shoe sneakers. And uh, what do you want? You your mean my, my grandpa, grandpa <laughs> monarchs? <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. Those monarchs, they're gorgeous. Uh, Aren't what they you, awesome? Awesome. <laughs> awesome. What do you want your legacy to be uh, from your time here? Uh, well, I, I go back to Roy Hobbs. Really? Yeah, you guys know who Roy Hobbs is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Roy the Hobbs natural. is, the, yeah, from the movie The Natural. We had some fireworks earlier that was kind of like that. Yeah. At the end of The Natural. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, a really uh, self-centered, selfish way. He said one time, he said, what, what do you want to have happen in the rest of your life? He said, there goes Roy Hobbs, the best there ever was. That'd be pretty cool. So. Okay. You just nailed I know that, that sounds sick. That, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Um... Is there anything else that you'd like to tell us or anything else you'd like to share with us today? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shoot, man, we're winding down already. Let it go. Uh, <laughs> no, I, the, the, the thing that I, would, I don't mind talking, sharing, is just that uh, this belief in people, the belief in the people around you, uh, and, and being driven to try to elevate their world 
and by bringing them to their very best, I, I think is a, is a pursuit that um, I've found over our years that has really allowed us to do really special things and, and develop special relationships. And, and uh, I hope, uh, you know, somewhere down the road affect the people that, we've, that have been in the organization, affect their world and, and their organization and their families or whatever. Because I, I really think if, if we would turn our focus to others uh, and, and the service of others, um, like we hear Howard Schultz talk about so much, uh, you know, service to others, I, I, I think that it's, um, it's so necessary. And, and, but more than that, you're going to do better. You're going to feel better. You're going you're gonna to help people find their best and, 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 and enhance their world. And, and so it, it would be, here's my an illustration. If you get to be a Little League coach, you know, to me, uh, being a Little League coach is, is, you know, you figure out where those guys play and how they play the game and all that. But sometimes there's going to be that little chubby kid that, that can't quite catch and can't quite throw fast enough or hard enough and can't hit that ball. But you could make that kid a heck of a third base coach. Yeah. You know, you could make him that guy that knows how to wind it when they're coming around the bases and cheerlead when he makes the right call and, and bring out. I think out I'm getting the, a baseball theme. So if not football, it would have been baseball. <laughs> it's all, it don't matter what sport. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah. I, I, I think that, that the mentality of helping others find their best is just um, something I want to keep standing for and sharing. And, and, uh, and I think it'll make things a little bit better if we do. So, thank Pete. you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.